This is Ed Lieberman, and the following lesson is part of my Networking Fundamentals course. So to get to this command line, right, because we talked about these are command line tools, we need to click on Start. And there's a couple different things we could do. What I like to do, because I think it's, it's just kind of the fastest and easiest way to get there, is right here in this little Search Programs and Files box, and by the way, if you're running an older operating system like Windows XP, you would click on run, and then you'd get a box like this. I just type in CMD, command, okay? That's what CMD is. It opens up what's called a command prompt. And you'll see right up here, here's the command prompt. Okay, if I click on that, I get a command prompt. And this prompt, this is the command line that we're talking about. Let me close this. I want to show you other ways that you can get there. You can also go into All Programs, Accessories, and you'll find the command prompt there. Okay, so that's another way that you can get to the command prompt. I can tell you that you can do things like pin this to the taskbar. You'll also find that if you open it enough times, you'll, you'll find it right here on your recently accessed stuff on your Start menu. And the overall point is, there's a lot of ways to get to this command prompt window. Another way of saying it would be the command line window. It's, it's officially called the command prompt. You can, you can see that right here, command prompt. But in this lesson, I've been referring to this as the command line tools. And this right here is called working from the command line. Okay, so now that you know how to get into this window, let's look at some of these commands. The first one I'm going to show you is ipconfig. So if I just type in ipconfig, it's all together, no spaces. It's not case sensitive. Okay, so even though back when we were looking at the different slides, I had it all in caps. Here I have it all in lowercase, but yet it'll still work. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. As a matter of fact, let me move my arrow out of the way. Now I'll hit enter. And it shows me some information about my IP configuration. Okay, it shows me that I'm working on a domain that I've created called trainsignal.local. Here's my IP address, 192.168.10.100. I have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And I'm pointing to a default gateway or a router of 192.168.10.1. Now you'll notice that there is another adapter that's listed here, but it's currently disconnected, so we won't worry about it. We're just going to focus on this Ethernet adapter up here. I also skipped over one piece of information, which I will point out to you right now, which is right here it says the link local IPv6 address. We're not going to worry about IPv6 for right now, but I just want to show you that that information is there. So it's not just IPv4, but it's both IPv4 and IPv6. Now I mentioned that you can also use switches with some of these commands. So a real common switch with ipconfig would be ipconfig, put a forward slash, and then type the word all. Watch what happens when I hit enter this time. Whoa, we get a lot more information. Matter of fact, I need to scroll back up here. I'm going to scroll up till I can see my ipconfig slash all. Now we can see that this computer is called Video PC. I guess it's what I happen to name it. It's got a hybrid node type, which is something for WINS, which we're not going to worry about. It talks about whether routing and WINS proxy are enabled. Again, advanced stuff, don't need to worry about. Let me go ahead and scroll down here a little bit. In this section, you'll notice there's a lot more information as well. We can see our physical address, or what's also referred to as the MAC address. DHCP, whether it's enabled or not, meaning are, are we dynamically getting this IP address or are we statically getting the IP address? And, and, I, and I do understand that there are certain things here that you may or may not understand, certain things that I'm going to cover later on in this course. Okay, so just do your best to follow along if you don't fully understand all the different terms that we're looking at. You'll see that this says yes to DHCP enabled. That means that this computer has been set up to look for a DHCP server to dynamically get its IP configuration. If it can't find one, 
auto configuration is also enabled. You may recall from another lesson that I talked about something called a PIPA, automatic private IP addressing. Okay, so that is enabled on this computer as well. Here's the information we already saw, the, the IPv6 address, the IPv4 address, subnet mask. Here's some lease information that has to do with the DHCP component. Again, we have our default gateway, but we also have our DHCP server where we got the IP address from. Here's some IPv6 information that we'll, we'll just go right past again for right now. And then here's our DNS servers, which we're pointing to, which is 192.168.1.11 and 12. Now these are servers that are providing name resolution or DNS name resolution for this computer. Okay, so you can see there's a lot more information available about our IP configuration. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.